And we spoke earlier today with the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, from Tel Aviv. I know you're wrapping up what has been a pretty quick uh, and busy trip to Israel. You met with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Did you get a sense uh, that his government is close to wrapping up this military operation? No, I don't think so. I think it's, um, you know, the airstrikes. I think the ground game is just now starting. And I will say, Margaret, when we walked in, the first thing we saw was the uh, horrific Hamas video uh, showing the gruesome uh, killings of these uh, barbaric terrorists. And it was a very uh, intense, kind of powerful moment. Uh, you know, uh, the prime minister was uh, in tears, uh, really teary-eyed about what happened. And remember, this is sort of like their 9-11. And they, they want to eliminate the threat, you know, as, as they should. And I think it, it, we talked a lot about the ground game operations humanitarian, and we also met with the Minister of Defense as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you just raised humanitarian aid. I know uh, the U.S. is the largest donor to the U.N. relief agency that operates inside of Gaza. Many in the Republican caucus do not support any aid going to them or to Palestinians even Palestinian civilians living in Gaza. Do you believe that the aid package going through Congress needs to include this kind of help? Well, I do, and I think the uh, Israelis do as well. I think, you know, I talked about this with the prime minister. They have put a buffer zone in the middle of Gaza uh, to cr create this humanitarian zone in southern Gaza. They opened up the Rafah Gate, that's Egypt, uh, yes. about 100 trucks a day or coming in, but it has to be like food, uh, water, and medicine. It, it can't be fuel because Hamas can use that to light their tunnels and operate them. There are still roughly 400 Americans stuck inside of Gaza, according to the State Department. Did you get any update on how they're doing? We did. Uh, in very sensitive negotiations with the Qataris. They're kind of the lead uh, broker, if you will, of this negotiation. Uh, you know, I'm meeting with, right after this interview, with a bunch of families of the hostages, and I met with them in the United States. Very dicey issue. And I think what uh, Hamas wants uh, would be a, a swap of prisoners in um, Israel, of Palestinians, in exchange for uh, these hostages, uh, mm -hmm. both Americans and Palestinians, in, in the Gaza. Uh, that's an ongoing thing. I, I hope it can happen. Um, a ceasefire would be very difficult without an agreement to release all hostages. To be clear, are the Palestinian Americans who are trapped in Gaza being included in that hostage negotiation? Is, is that what you're saying as well? No, this is a, no, okay. I'm sorry. It's the Palestinian, uh, Palestinians in, uh, in prison in Israel that are being, you know, negotiated uh, in exchange for prisoners of both Israelis and Americans held cop, you know, captive in, uh, in Gaza. Understood. So that Hamas proposal is being entertained. Interesting to know that. I, I want to ask you about what Congress can deliver in terms of aid to Israel. Um, do you think that the new Speaker of the House has the clout necessary uh, with your caucus to move through a package that includes Israel aid, Ukraine aid, and other national security items? Our aid to Israel is urgent and time is of the essence. Uh, we have to deliver this package. Now, I know that we have offsets and, and that's fair, uh, but I don't think we can play political games with this uh, to support our ally because, uh, you know, if, if they fail and we fail, it would uh, have a, a very bad uh, effect across the Middle East. Uh, into Ukraine, that's vitally important as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so is Taiwan. And so is the last line of defense, the southern border. So really, if you think about it, all these threats are really tied together. Now, whether we handle it all together or separately with, say, Ukraine and border security, all that has yet to be figured out. The stage to, if you will, CR that the speaker is trying to implement 
I think we'll actually move the process forward. Well, that, that deadline in terms of government funding is next week, November 17th. Yesterday, the mm -hmm. speaker made this mm -hmm. proposal. It's kind of an unusual way to do it called a laddered short-term funding mm -hmm. deal. The White House says it's just right. not serious and it's a waste of time. Are we going to see a government shutdown? Well, you know, we have the power of the purse. Uh, and look, we need, we need more time. The CRs always hurt the military, always hurt our national security. And so the, the first CR until January could resolve the four last four appropriations bills that we can't pass to date. So we could pass those and then have until February to negotiate with uh, the Senate to get this done and put it on the president's. Right, but yes. first you need the votes that to actually also pass give us time. this. <laughs> so, so can Republicans vote together to pass this proposal, this short-term funding agreement? We're going to have to. I mean, there's no choice here. I mean, the, the world is on fire from where I sit. Uh, it is too, uh, you know, urgent. Uh, we can't mm -hmm. sit back and do nothing. And, and, and talking to Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, they needed this yesterday, in his words. Um, Ukraine needed it yesterday. Uh, the border, for certainly, needed it yesterday. We know that Chairman Xi is threatening Taiwan and the Pacific. Yeah. So, you know, I think what the Senate's going to do, they're going to come up with a package probably after Thanksgiving that they will send over to the House. Right. And we'll see if that government funding proposal can get passed by next week to avoid that shutdown. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us from Israel this morning.